Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Welcome to tonight's Bible study. Trust in the Lord that you'll be blessed this evening. You'll be highly favored. <laughs> Welcome you from the four corners of the earth, wherever you are joining from. May you be blessed today. May you be highly favored. May you be lifted. Welcome those who are joining on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube, and other platforms, of course. Heavenly Father, we receive your word tonight. Let the entrance of your word encourage, enlighten, equip, encourage, enlighten, equip, encourage, enlighten, equip. Bless your people, Lord, in Jesus' name. We'd like to celebrate everyone who's joining us today. May you be blessed, and may you really be highly favored in the name of the Lord. May today's word bless you wherever you've joined from. May it impact your life. Please share with other people. Let them know we're together again to study the word. Today's word is going to bless you as we look at the subject of faith again. Faith for the miracle hour faith for the miracle hour and i uh, would trust the lord that it will impact your life in the name of jesus medina in accra welcome to the platform this evening god bless you richly tetford in norfolk may you be blessed and highly favored fred in barmwood god bless you this evening in jesus name in France. God bless you this evening in Jesus' name. May you be highly favored. Stephen H. God bless Brain Tree in Essex. The blessings of the Lord on you today in the name of Jesus. Still waiting for Instagram. Virginia, USA. God bless you. Luton, God bless you. Dramen in Norway. Hey, God bless you richly. May you be highly favored. In Jesus' name, Ipswich in Suffolk. God bless you all the way in Ipswich. In Jesus' name. South Orkenden in Essex, God bless Ivor Village, blessings, Padova in Italy, blessings on you this evening, Walton Store, the Lord bless you richly, Asaba Delta, Nigeria, God bless you, Richland, Missouri, Richland, Missouri, God bless you this evening in the name of Jesus, uh, West Little Hampton and West Sussex, God bless you. I like your name, G Major. Are you a musician? Uh, there's a key. That's a, a key on, 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 on in music, G Major. Tim Smith, God bless you richly this evening. May you be highly favored today. Uh, stand well in stains. Blessings on you in the name of the Lord. R Richland, Mississippi. God bless you richly. In Jesus' name. Okay, Instagram is now on. Let's see. Uh, okay, voila. All those on Instagram, we also welcome you. Chadwell St. Mary. God bless you this evening in Jesus' name. Aya, Deja, Lisa, Rika, Tadiza, Mitchum, sorry, God bless you richly. Uh, Dutse in Abuja, God bless you, Jesus' name. Naida Zundulota, Stanwell and Stain's blessings. Leighton in London, God bless you. That's very close to church. Aya te da tol bradish kai brotus jenandere kubrozali Homewood, Illinois. I like that name, Homewood, Illinois. God bless you in Homewood. May you be highly favored this evening in the name of Jesus. Please let your friends know we're together tonight. It's going to be exciting, it's going to be enriching. 
The word will bless your life. The word will strengthen you. The faith for the miracle hour. That's what we're looking at this evening. And we're going to first start with some of the benefits of faith even before we go into other depths of teaching on faith. I taste of Lishinoke, also Stapleton, Bristol. God bless you this evening. May you be highly favored. May you be lifted. Ah, yeah, yeah. Perth in Scotland. God bless you in Perth, Scotland. May you be highly favored this evening. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Richmond Hill, Georgia. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Yalish Kabaro Suntelere Brakete Koso Poto Lere Kabarata Lere. The God of interventions whom we prayed about this morning will intervene in your life. Will stretch his hand to prove himself mighty and show himself as an awesome God in your life in the name of Jesus giving you testimony, proving himself great, proving himself strong in the name of Jesus. Hoxton in Hackney, God bless richly. God bless you richly. Coventry, may you be highly favored today. May you be lifted. May you be victorious. Hidi, you know, Shinabo Kate Rebo Kandere Brado Shkale Li Corona Vishta Le Rebo. Virginia, USA, God bless you this evening. May you be highly favored. We speak blessings into the love of everyone who's joining us tonight, New Market in Suffolk. God bless you richly, in Jesus' name. Ali da da Broko Shoto Alida. Katie, Texas. Katie, Texas, God bless you. Uh, S.E. in Quara State. God bless you richly. Wow, it looks like this gentleman moves around first in Kaduna, Nigeria, then he's in Quara, Nigeria, then he's in Toronto, Nigeria, God, Toronto, USA, God, I mean Canada. God bless you this evening. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Enfield Lock. May you be blessed. May you be highly favored today. May you be victorious. Uh, one more minute of greeting you and then we delve in. We, we dive into the word to bless you in Jesus' name. We celebrate everyone on the platform tonight. Uh, Newcastle upon Tyne. God bless you richly. May you be highly favored. Italia, Tali Rosoko, Sitali Zikia. Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota. All right, sometimes we have Rochester, Essex, I know uh, Rochester, Kent, UK. And now we have Rochester, Minnesota, and the United States. I think Americans should pay for all our names they took from England to the United States, and including Canada and Australia. Uh, yeah, Barush. Be blessed this evening, be lifted, be victorious. Plumstead, Southeast London. Dagnum in Essex. May you be blessed and highly favored. We'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us tonight. I pray for you that the word will truly enrich your life, empower you to be totally victorious in Jesus' name. Upper Clapton. The Bible makes very, very clear that faith is the currency with which we deal in the things of the Spirit. Faith is the currency of heaven. Faith is uh, a necessity if you will walk with God. Faith is what you need if you are going to receive from God. Faith is what gives you access to everything God has. Faith is non-negotiable. It is the requirement for healing. It is the requirement for prosperity. It is the requirement for divine intervention. You want to see the hand of God in this situation? We've got to learn to walk with God by faith. One time, somebody wanted to see before they believe. Oh, Gadogo in Burkina Faso, God bless you this evening. And Jesus, uh, Kruger's dub South Africa, blessings. And Jesus rebuked that person, that was Thomas. 
when Jesus rose from the dead, he had not seen the Lord. He wasn't there when others saw him. So he said, except I see the print of the nail in his hand, I wouldn't believe it's the real Jesus. And so when Jesus, Rosha, he came in without them opening the door. He just came in, praise the Lord, behind closed doors. And he said, Thomas, these are the prints. But blessed are they who do not see, but they believe. In the book of Corinthians, Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, God has chosen that as a method for receiving because he himself is a God of faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, no, no, 11, 3 says, by faith we understand that the worlds which we see and that, in, I tell you, there is no other explanation for the universe other than the Bible. I don't, it's, it's very, it doesn't make sense to say a big bang. What bang the bang? How big is the bang? From where did the bang come? Can a bang come out of nothing? Can a bang come out of nothing? And when the bang bangs, how can a sound bang create so much material universe or multiverse? Sometimes when you listen to astronauts, they mess up your mind. The other day I was watching and an astronaut said, you see this picture you are looking at? Those dots that look like stars are not stars. They are each a galaxy. Do you know what a galaxy is? A galaxy has billions of stars, planets, quasars, asteroids. This our planet Earth is in a solar system. Our solar system is in a galaxy. I think we're in Milky Way. I think so, yeah. We're in Milky Way galaxy. Uh, the next galaxy close to us is Andromeda. We're in Milky Way galaxy, and our galaxy has billions of stars. Billions. Billions. Then they now said there are billions of galaxies. Oh, Jesus, man. They say something like 10,000 billion galaxies. So, where will that bank come from? Except it is, you see, it will require an uncaused cause to cause the cause. It will require the one who cannot be made to make. It would require the one who also is uh, orderly in what he does because he created this multiverse and this our planet is amazingly not too far from the sun. We will freeze. Not too close. We will, f we will fry. So you either choose the freezing or the frying. And yet we are 93 million miles away from the sun. Yeah. That that heat that told you when the sun shone, it left the sun eight minutes ago. What do you mean? Yeah. Traveling at 160 something thousand kilometers per second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which means going around our planet about 32 times in one second. Hey. So. It takes a God who could speak such into existence. So Hebrews 11, 3 says, By faith we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. So God created what we see by his word and by faith. He called it and it became by an act of faith. Then he said, just as I operated this way for you to be my child, you have to be like me. You have to operate like me. Glory to God. We have to walk faith. So we now see all through the book of Hebrews 11, faith is now, we now see a, a hall of faith. In, in every part of the world, they have what is called the hall of fame. Basketball hall of fame, football ball hall of fame, soccer hall of fame, this, this hall of fame. So you have the hall of faith. Abel is mentioned in verse 4. Enoch is mentioned in verse 5 and 6. Um, 
Noah is mentioned in verse 7. Abraham is mentioned in verses 8 to 10. Uh, Sarah is mentioned in verse 11 and 12. It goes on in the whole of Hebrews 11. It just tells us what they did. 17 to 19 goes back to Abraham again. Verses, verse 20 tells us by faith Isaac. Uh, by verse 21 tells us by faith Jacob. Verse 22 tells us by faith Joseph. Verse 23 tells us by faith Moses. Uh, up to verse 28. Uh, it goes on. Verse 29 tells us by faith uh, the whole of the children of Israel. Uh, by faith, verse 31 tells us, Rahab, even a prostitute, operated by faith. Wow. Then from verse 32 to 38, it listed some, some of those judges, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, that they all operated by faith. That's the currency by which you receive your healing, you receive your favor. In fact, the Bible says these people, through acts of faith, toppled kingdoms, made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions, fire, swords were thrusts, sword thrusts. I mean, they turned disadvantage to advantage. I'm reading the trans message translation now. They won battles. They routed alien armies. Women received their loved ones back from the dead, all by faith. So faith is a necessity if you are going to receive from God. It was by faith that Joshua subdued kingdoms, according to that place. Joshua chapter 12, we see him subduing kingdom. They had no great weapon. They had no great weapon. They had stick, uh, saucepan, <laughs> stone. And then they were confronted with armies that had chariots of iron. The Hittites were the ones who discovered iron. Yet, by faith, Joshua conquered them. Joshua chapter 12, 2 Samuel chapter 8. By faith, the people of God walked righteousness. Genesis 15, verse 6. It was by righteousness that Abraham, I mean by faith that Abraham lived a righteous life. The Bible says, and Abraham believed God. And it was reckoned unto him as righteousness. By faith, they obtained promises. Numbers 14, verse 30. Those who walked by sight lost the promise. In Numbers 14, in the opening of it, the whole of Israel cried because 10 pastors came back with bad report. But two pastors came with good report and said, by faith we can enter, we can possess, we can take the land, we can be blessed. So faith is a necessity. It was by faith that a prophet called Daniel shut the mouth of lions. So if somebody today says, okay, uh, my God delivered Daniel. My God delivered Daniel. My God delivered Daniel. Yes, come and deliver me. And you jump into a lion's den. That's not by faith. You set yourself up. Daniel, in his own case, found himself set up in this situation. And faith worked for him. Faith worked for him. Faith made him to possess possession. Faith made him to take territories. Praise the Lord. So by faith, faith stopped the mouth of the lion. Faith quenched fire. Daniel chapter 3, when the three Hebrew men were thrown into fire, the Bible says by faith they quenched the fire. It is faith that made some people to escape the sword. First Samuel 17, the only way David conquered Goliath was faith. This guy is standing there 9 feet 11 inches. 9 feet 11 inches. He roared through the valley of Elah. Everybody was scared. The soldiers sat in their tents. Then a teenager shows up who had seen God at work. So you see there's fact, there's faith. There is head knowledge, there's faith. The reason many believers never enjoy God is that they are operating with God by head knowledge. By head knowledge. So when you begin to walk with God by faith, listen, listen, I gotta warn you, I gotta warn you. God's gonna set you up in places where you will need faith to conquer. You will need faith to overcome. You will need faith to possess possessions. 
you will need faith to turn things around. It was by faith that they were made strong. Hebrews 11, 11. Romans 4, 19 says that uh, uh, Abraham was made strong because he considered the word, he, he, he received the word of God and he who was dead was made to be alive again. Let's look at that. Romans 4, 19. Romans 4, 19. Romans 4, 19. Let's see, man, message translation is going to tell us a different way, but let's first read. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and said it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old could never have father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. So he believed in the, he believed in life when he was impotent. He was already a hundred years old. He was unable but because by faith, if God said, I'm going to have a child, then I will have a child. In fact, whatever happened to Abraham, we later see that whatever power came into Abraham, not only did he be Isaac, after Isaac, he now bore children. He now bore children, man. He now bore children through a lady called Ketura, a black woman. Jesus, man. So faith is the access key to receive him from God. It was by faith that uh, Abraham came back to life. He was made strong. By faith, the Bible says they became valiant in battle. Second Samuel 23 from verse 8, they were valiant in battle, they conquered, they took over nations. Judges chapter 7, Deborah, you know, those are, that's one of the people I like to meet when I get to heaven. I like to meet that bad girl, man. How she conquered, took over the army of Israel and confronted, I think it was General the Jael or Cicera, I can't remember his name now. She confronted the guy. The guy ran from war for her. He ran from that girl. He ran away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you got to understand that it was only by faith. If she had looked at gender, if she had looked at limitation of her own training, she would not be able to. You possess possessions by faith. You take territories by faith. You silence hell by faith. The Bible says it was by faith that they put armies to flight. First Samuel 17, 51. After David, pow, God Goliath fallen. The Bible says the army of the army, the, the Philistines began to run, and the children of Israel chased after them. It was by faith. The Philistines had more weapons. In the days of Samuel, things were very, in the days of Saul, things were very bad. Sometimes the Bible will say that uh, there were no weapons. There were no weapons. Only Saul himself and his son Jonathan had a weapon. I can't understand what kind of army was that. That everybody showed up with no weapons. And then another time, I'm going to preach it one day. Another time in Israel, the Bible will say, even the few weapons they had, they had to go to the land of the Philistines to sharpen it. It's very strange, isn't it? That you have to go to the camp of the enemy to sharpen your weapon with which you will go back to fight the enemy. So by faith, the Bible says by faith, women had their children resurrected back. In 1 Kings 6, chapter 17, from verse 17, we see resurrection because of faith. We also see it in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 18 to 37. That woman who told Elisha, do not lie to me. Matter of fact, 1 Kings 17 and 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 18 are similar. Elisha replicated the, the miracle of Elijah. Elijah went into the room and raised that child after the mother had put a faith demand on him. 
same thing in second kings chapter 4 from verse 18 to 37 that wealthy woman whose husband was old and her the child she got by a miracle died she put a demand on the faith of elisha she placed the boy's body on the bed of restoration in front of the table of revelation by the chair of enthronement near the candle stand of illumination and uh, in the upper room of elevation now she went and called the man of god when the man of god came faith had already been released kaidosha redos and kabalation they read about yerosa that when Elisha came, the faith of the woman walked. He raised the child. Through faith also they endured torture. I'm just taking you through Hebrews chapter 11 now. And who are the ones who endured torture through faith? In Genesis 39 verse 20, we see that someone like, like Joseph, the Bible tells us later in the Psalms, that his hands were put in stocks, his legs were locked up until the word of God had tested him. He went through all that by faith. In the house of Potiphar, by faith. He endured whatever was thrown at him by faith, knowing that if God had shown him that one day the sun, the moon, eleven stars, and the world would come and bow at his feet, he knew that it was going to come to pass. Praise the Lord. And by faith he endured the master's wife lying against him by faith. Because it takes faith to go through all, the, all those things. But the Bible says, but there in jail, God was still with Joseph. He reached out in kindness to him. He put him on good terms with the head jailer. Faith went with him and favor went with him. I see you also operating on a dimension of faith that will cause doors to open for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Again, by faith we see that uh, they endured mockings, scourgings, bonds, imprisonments. Hebrews 11.36 mentions this. Genesis 39 verse 20 tells us that Joseph endured the scourging, the bond, the mocking. Yeah, this Hebrew guy you brought. He endured it by faith, knowing that somehow God was going to make a way for him. First Kings 22 verse 27. So he took faith to stand through the pain, the mocking, the scourging, the bonds, the imprisonment, knowing that there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel, and there's going to be a turnaround, and there's going to be a silencing of darkness in the name of the Lord. By faith also, they suffered stoning. Some of them were stoned. In fact, people like, people like Paul, they endured, they endured a lot of things. Paul endured a lot of things because of the faith. Endured a lot of things because of the faith. They endured stoning. People stoned them because of the faith. Second Chronicles 22. 4 verse 21 says but they worked out a plot against Zechariah and with the complicity of the king he actually gave the order they murdered him pelting him with rocks right in the court of the temple of God they were throwing stones at Zechariah a prophet of God they did the same thing to Paul they endured these things because faith is not only the faith to receive it is also the faith to go through some things because listen, uh, any gospel that tells you that you will not face challenges and battles is an incomplete gospel. You've got to understand the Bible says in this world we will face persecution. We will face the torture and the testing of our faith. But we are guaranteed victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The next exploit of faith again is that we see that it is through faith that they endured death by even <laughs> sowing. They sawed human beings in the days of the, of the emperors of Rome. Hebrews 11.37 tells us this. They were cutting human beings 
like they were cutting uh, wood. Hebrews 11, 37. They were cutting them, but these men, they endured, knowing that one day they will see the Lord face to face and they stood whatever was being done to them. They took it as, I would rather go through this and see Jesus. I would rather go through this and see the Lord and become whom he said I will be than to, than to try to escape. Let's read Hebrews 11 verse 37. Say some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Jesus. And others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. I'm sure many of you who are watching me tonight, you live in a place where the gospel is free and you can serve the Lord freely. Although that freedom is being lost gradually. I was reading something in the newspaper called Christian Post today and I was in too much shock. Too much shock. America is gradually becoming almost worse than communist nations because humanists are taking over places of government. So in the state of Oregon, a state that had once known the revival of the Holy Spirit, in the state of Oregon, they are now making effort to ensure born-again Christians cannot adopt children. Whoa. Yeah. A woman, her husband died in a ghastly accident, and I think maybe the child they had or something. I didn't remember that part. So wanting to give some of whatever she has, money, time, she wants to raise children and make a difference. She goes to apply. And they refuse her. They say only if she would not teach the child her faith and she must take the children to the gay pride parade. Oh, so you want me to take the child to gay pride parade, but you don't want me to teach him my faith. And also, they must be ready to make the child available if the child wants gender change. Jesus, man, that is in America, God's own country. Uh, just this week or so, I think in the same Christian post, I also read of a recent killing of Christians in northern Nigeria, about 33. It is so sad in the country of Nigeria in the past 10 years, close to 40,000 people have been killed in the northern part of the nation. It is so bad that the newspapers don't report it front page anymore. I mean, how can 33 people die and it didn't make news on television, newspaper? But you see, this is what some people endure for their faith, particularly in settings where there is a, in the name of religion, there is a demonic entity that some people think, you don't do my religion, I kill you. Hey, 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 I'm a free moral agent. I have the power of choice. The greatest gift God gave man that makes him different from animals is the power of choice. Some of you chose to eat filet mignon today. Some of you ate uh, some nice chicken and chips. Some of you ate the typical English quick meal, uh, fish and chips. Some of you had a massive five course, three course meal. That's the power of choice. If you were a bird, all you would do is just chirp and pick seed. That's all, seed in the morning, seed at noon, seed in the evening. You know, I have peacocks around my house and all they have is this grow, we ground them, it's a mixture of corn and millet. And now I give them the treat of, of peanuts. So they're always at my door every early morning waiting for the for the, for the peanuts. And they know when it's in my hand and they know when it's not in my hand. Or even when I'm approaching the door from behind, they can smell it. You can hear them even saliv salivating. That's, they don't have a choice. You have a choice. Any religion that kills human beings, destroys other people because they do not assent to it, the perpetrators are led by demons. I'm not saying that religion is led by demons, but the perpetrators are led by demons. And there cannot be any religious book that says kill somebody because they rejected your faith. In Christianity, we teach people to share Jesus Christ. Do you know what? 
Did you know that not everybody will be born again? Jesus made it very clear. He said, this gospel shall be preached in all the nations for a witness. Because some people will be in eternity one day and they will say, oh, uh, nobody talked to me. Ah, then they will roll out the day somebody gave them a tract and they trashed the tract. They trashed the tract. They did not read it. Or somebody tried to tell them Jesus saves and they say, oh yeah, yeah, Jesus saves, but he can't save on my money. You know, they make some funny jokes. <laughs> so, the gospel will be preached for, uh, for a witness. We are supposed to preach. So these people went through this pain because they know what they have believed. Paul said, for I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which is kept unto him until that day. By faith, we also see according to Hebrews 11 that they suffered temptation. In Genesis 39 from verse 1 to 17, can you imagine? The wife of Potiphar comes to Joseph. She's pretty. She's the wife of the general, the commanding officer of the whole of the army of Egypt. The army that ruled the world at that time, that conquered nations and brought the tributes to Pharaoh. And the boss, his wife, looks at Joseph and sees a handsome young uh, Hebrew boy untouched and she felt hey lie with me but the guy endured and repelled and repulsed was was repulsed by her action by faith he was able to walk away from it what you walk away from determines what you walk into faith is a powerful thing by faith also we see in the scriptures that some even suffered martyrdom. They were killed by the sword. First Samuel 22 verse 18, First Kings 19 verse 10. They were killed for their faith. Killed for their faith. Today we read of the Eastern, of Eastern Europe, Romania, Bulgaria, Poland, Russia. Until the iron curtains fell, you could not preach Jesus. You just could not preach Jesus unless you went to the church that the, the government endorsed and those ones didn't preach the word. They were just sanctimonious and full of, uh, of events without power. Same thing is happening in China right now. <laughs> China chose to start its own church and translated the Bible the way they wanted. And if you don't go to that church, they kill you. But despite that, the gospel of Jesus Christ cannot be stopped. 33,000 people get saved every day in China. Yes, every day. 33,000 people are getting born again in the country of China. Keep praying for the Chinese church, the underground one. They go, they look for them, they arrest them, they arrest their pastors, they lock them up put them in hard labor, the guys come out, they still preach Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith. By faith also some people suffered afflictions. Hebrews 11 verse 37 to 38. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 18, verse 8 and verse 13. They suffered affliction. Somebody rejected them but they stand. They stood. They knew whom they had believed. Paul said, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. So faith is acting on the word of God. Faith is recognizing that it is, it is God that kept you, and it is God that can sustain you to the end. Praise the Lord. Faith is a necessity. Faith is a necessity. If you must receive from God, you have to learn the walk of faith. You have to learn the walk of faith. Praise God. Praise God. 
And so tonight we pick it up from where we stopped the other time in some other part of my teaching. And we look more at how you receive things by faith. Faith will never walk in isolation and never walk in isolation. It works with other gifts. Works with other gifts. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 12, he said, faith, the working of miracles, the gift of healings. So to minister healing, you need faith. Sometimes when you call for people who are stone deaf, you need faith to be able to lay hand and just believe they will be healed. When I pray, for, particularly I love praying for deaf ears. I've seen so many. I start with people who are partially deaf or who can't hear well or who can hardly hear a drop or who have had their uh, eardrums destroyed. And I've seen crazy miracles. I can't forget in uh, a, a Sisters Fellowship International in Onicha, Nigeria. 21 women came out partial hearing, God opens their ears, but there was one lady who said during an operation, I don't know if it was nose or, eye or, or somewhere, and they pierced her, her eardrum, and the eardrum was destroyed, so she can't hear at all from that ear. Pow! Power of God hits her. I told them to block the good ear, totally 100% blocked, and was whispering from very far, she could hear clearly. Jesus is vivant. Jesus is alive. Praise the Lord. It requires faith to know your, your sins are also forgiven. It's by faith that we receive forgiveness from Jesus Christ. It is by faith that we become born again, not by actions. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 17, And if Christ be not raised, uh, uh, your faith is vain and you are yet in your sins. So by faith, our sins are forgiven. We receive the forgiveness of God and we receive Jesus into our hearts. Also, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Unfortunately, I still just have an issue with churches. I want to make salvation to be the size of your heart or the length of your dress. Whatever happens inside me must affect outside. Have you been around a person who eats one particular kind of food too much? You will smell it on the outside. If you eat too much garlic, you will smell it. You eat too much curry, you will smell it. You eat too much, uh, what do I eat too much? I like peanuts. I eat too much peanuts, man. I need deliverance from peanuts. <laughs> It's a, late, it's a new thing I just, since COVID, <laughs> during COVID, I was, oh, Jesus, man, I must have eaten a mountain of uh, pistachio. As soon as I finished mon Morning Glow, yeah, I just, I just, I just started pistachio. <laughs> so, faith is a necessity. Faith is powerful. Faith is acting on the word of God. Faith is what gets you to overcome. Other people's attitude and reaction must not determine your faith level. This is the next point. My faith must be in Christ. I love that song. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. So our faith must look unto him. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who because of the glory that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. So faith is acting on God's word. Faith is the determinant of your relationship with God, but it must not be determined by other people. If other people are behaving silly, it must not affect you. Your eyes must look to God. So you must learn that your faith should be something you stand for. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 says, not, that, not for that we have dominion over your faith, 
but a helpers of your joy. For by faith you stand. So do not let other people's faith affect yours. You must know who you believe for yourself. And you must walk in the word for yourself. Faith is a necessity if you must possess possession, take territories, silence the enemy, shut the mouth of devils, have victory. You cannot walk by faith and be led by sight. Don't forget that. We said that earlier and I repeat it again. You cannot walk by faith and be led by sight. You must know how to hold on to God and trust his word. I know that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Sight can give you a different impression. Faith will tell you in spite of what you see. You must say what you see in the spirit. That's why 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, We look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. So you must learn to cast your gaze on God and his word and not on the circumstance. Faith is acting on the word of God. Faith is holding on to God and what he said. Faith is a necessity for you to enjoy God, for you to receive from God. In fact, Jesus said, saying it and faithing it must go together. Saying it and faithing it must go together. So he says in his word, Mark 11, 23, 24, Whosoever shall say to the mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt what he says, he shall have what he says. So you say it by faith because God himself said it by faith. The Bible says by faith we understand that the walls which we see were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11 3 were framed by the word of God. Then John chapter 1 affirms that it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then go back to Genesis where it says, And God said, Let there be. So faith is when you act on the same spoken word. When you read that Jesus heals, you must receive it by faith. But not only receive, you must act. Imagine I have a glass of water. Believing is to believe that that glass of water can quench my thirst. Acting in faith is drinking that water. It's, not, it's no use holding the glass of water and singing, Lord, I believe all things are possible. Drinking the water is that act of faith, the step that must be taken to receive what God has. So living things do grow. Let your faith grow. Let your faith grow. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 says, Therefore, as you are bound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge and in all diligence and in your love to us, see that you are bound in this grace also. So it says, as you are bound in everything, in faith. So faith can grow. You can go from faith to faith. From faith to faith. From one level of faith to another level. You can start with a mustard seed faith. Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, 
you will say to the mountain, be thou removed. And if you do not doubt in your heart, you will have what you said. But you see, you must not stay at the mustard seed level. You need to grow your faith to the point where you receive what you need. And why do believers hold on to what Jesus said and what Jesus has done? Because he rose. You see, the resurrection of Jesus, the chief booster of our faith, is the resurrection of our Savior. We serve a living Jesus. We serve a living Savior. His word is real. His word is alive. He spoke and his word stands. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain. 1 Corinthians 5, 14. I think it should be 15, 14. Let me just check. I'm sure. 1 Corinthians 15, 14. I'm very sure. 1 Corinthians. Because 1 Corinthians 15 is the resurrection, is the resurrection chapter. Nebakadisha, yeah, Rukaraba. Yes, I was very correct. First Corinthians fifteen fourteen. And if Christ has not been raised, then all our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. So the resurrection of Christ becomes the massive, indefatigable, unquestionable, unshakable proof that our faith will work. Our faith will work. The door will open. The miracle will happen. What God said will come to pass because if he can raise his son, that's why the Bible says the same power that raised his son from the dead will quicken your mortal body. Romans 8, 11. So the ability, of, the ability to thank God in advance is also a way to show your faith. It increases your faith and production level when you begin to thank God. God, I thank you for making a way, for giving the answers, for showing the breakthrough, for silencing the enemy, for making a way out for me, for blessing me, for doing it. When you do that, you have shown that you believe that God will keep his word. He will do what he said he will do. So in Colossians 2 verse 6 and 7, he says, As you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord. So walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Abounding in your faith with thanksgiving. Giving God thanks in advance is a sign that you know that God cannot lie. Giving God thanks in advance is a proof that you have held on to the God who spoke the word and that he cannot lie. Giving God thanks in advance is a sure sign that you know that the God we serve is a God who honors his word. Giving thanks to God in advance is a way to show that your faith is not shaken. Listen, as we bring our teaching to a close this evening, I'm sure you now see to receive your healing, you need to walk by faith. To change a circumstance, you need to walk by faith. To see the enemy defeated in your life, you need the walk of faith. Sometimes we would wish we just see some things just with our physical eye. But God just wants us to show that we trust him. We do it every day. We trust the things humans create. We see a plane that is going from London <coughs> to New York. It's going to fly. 39,000 feet above sea level. 90% <laughs> of the time, you never saw the captain. You only heard his voice. And in a crackled speaker in the plane, I don't know why most planes have crackled sound. Well, it's getting to be improved nowadays. But then the name of the pilot is often muffled. Sometimes I try to listen because I fly a lot. It comes on, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain, uh, blah, 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 blah. You didn't hear it very well. 
I wouldn't be flying the plane today, but uh, the flight officer, the first flight officer, something like that, will be the one flying today. The, f the flight officer himself is trying to rack up more flight hours so he can become a captain. So you are the guinea pig <laughs> for testing and racking more hours for the flight officer so he can become a captain. Jesus, man. And this guy is going to take me over the Atlantic. And yet I believed. I bought my ticket. I sat in the plane. I didn't see the man who is taking me to fly over uh, from London to New York. And out of the six, seven, seven hours to New York, about four of it will be over water. And yet I believed. If I can believe the man whose crackled voice I heard over a bad microphone, over a bad loudspeaker, about the Jehovah whose word cannot fail, whose word created the universe and put things in place, is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. Therefore, this evening, I prophesy into your life that from today, by faith, may you enjoy peace with God. By faith, may you walk without condemnation in the name of Jesus. By faith, may you be alive in the spirit and enjoy the life of Jesus and the life of being led by the Holy Spirit. By faith, may you know that you are a child of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. By faith, may you know that you are an heir of God. You have a right and a joint heir with Jesus Christ to inherit all that belongs to God. Romans 8, 17. By faith, may you enjoy this truth that everything in this season of your life will work together for your good because you love the Lord and because you are you are called according to his purpose. Can I hear you shout your good amen wherever you are? I speak into your life that today by faith you are co you are a conqueror and more than a conqueror. You know, there are many heavyweight boxers, but the one who has the belt is more than a heavyweight. He's the one who is the champion. So you are the one with the heavyweight belt because your Savior has given you the belt. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. Romans 8 verse 37. By faith, that's who God called you. Before the battle began, your result is already announced. Kalira! By faith, you are separated by the love of God, for the love of God. Nothing, therefore, can take you away from the love of God. From this day, by faith, you are a laborer with Jesus. You win souls for the kingdom. You are blessing the kingdom. Your seed matters. Your offering matters. Your tithing matters. Your giving matters. Your prayer matters. Your worship matters. Even your prayer matters. The Bible tells in the book of Revelation that they gather the prayer of the saints in a bowl. In a bowl, the tears of believers. They gathered in a bowl. And their tears cries out to God and says, When are you going to avenge us? By faith, you are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20 You represent heaven. You are more important than the ambassador of China, than the ambassador of Russia, than the ambassador of America, than the ambassador of you know, than the British High Commissioner or ambassador. You are a plenipotentiary of heaven. By faith, you are righteous in Christ. You have the righteousness of God inside you. 2 Corinthians 5.21 It's already in you. No debate. No argument about it. By faith, you are a new creation. You are not panel beaten. You are not going to be nice. You are already nice. You are not going to be new. You are already new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Hallelujah. By faith from today, you can do all things. Philippians 4.13, you can overcome. You can be blessed. You can be lifted. Victory is coming to your house. Glory is coming to your house. By faith, you are complete in Christ Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14. You are, and Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. You are complete in Christ. Needing nothing. Your life is already enhanced. 
by the beauty of his presence. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. And because of the faith that you have, you will conquer. You will overcome. You will be above. Sickness will not conquer you. Disease will not overwhelm you. Challenges of life will not run you out of town. I prophesy to your life, anything you are facing in this season of your life, you come out of it stronger. You come out of it better. Darkness will not overwhelm light in your life. I repeat, darkness will not overwhelm light in your life. I say again, darkness will not overwhelm light in your life. I say it louder. Darkness will not overwhelm light in your life. Because of the faith you have, I speak into your life today, we renounce every power of darkness. We break its grace, its power in your life. You will shine, you will excel. Because of the light of God in your life, you will go places, you will enjoy blessings. Because of the light of God in your life, you will know grace, favor, help, righteousness, progress, peace, development, joy, success, restoration, new things, blessings, revival. Because of the faith that you carry, God will remember you for good. God will remember you for good. God will remember you for good. So shall it be. Because of the faith you have. Arekusia. Despite the word of your doctor. The counsel of the Lord will stand. He said with long life. Will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. May God satisfy you with long life. And you will live long live strong. Nothing broken. Nothing destroyed. Nothing broken. Nothing destroyed. Nothing broken, nothing destroyed. Nothing broken, nothing destroyed. Kadibidosha, Telebronosia, King Krabota, Ekidentali, Zilibro, Kototi Sikia, Telebro Toshindia, Maka, Prosi, Kita. The evidence of being a child of God will perpetually be in your life. Every hand that hell raises against you shall fail for your sake. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We close tonight. Remind you again a few announcements. We'll see you in the morning. Very major. Morning glow. It's a time of great power. This morning we were really blessed as we prophesied divine intervention. Praise God. Praise God. So join us in the morning. Tomorrow evening. There is Members Connect for Wealth Masterclass. All those who are in the Wealth Masterclass is a time where all the members of the Wealth Masterclass come together, they network, they learn together, they are inspired by like-minded entrepreneurs, they share stories that encourage one another. Saturday, there is Intentional Parenting Seminar. Do all you can. Don't sit down. Don't complain. Get to be at the venue to learn, to hear. Something is going on, something terribly demonic. I don't understand the huge agenda of the other side. To read what I saw today about, about Oregon State in the United States worried me. A woman was refused the right to adopt children because she's born in, she's a Christian in America. A nation that, of course, they invaded and took over from Native Americans. Uh, Yebo Kosaya, you know. Took over. Took over. They took over. They've taken over. Now in Europe, they're looking for the preacher who will speak against LGBTQ or... or Oh, this, 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 this uh, uh, gender thing, and then they can attack, pick on, pick on them. You and they are already using techniques of teaching children and saying, "Don't tell mom at home." We 
which is a violation of the parent. A violation of the parent. Don't tell mom at home. A violation of the parent. So if you do not know what to do, you'll find yourself sucked in. Don't miss intentional parenting seminar. But that's not all. You need to know how to parent. Parent, you know, a lot of, in the 39 years I've been in England, I've seen all sorts. Well-meaning parents will work so hard and send their children to a university, ship them out. By the time the kid comes back, he has no time for the God of his parent. You need to know how to put so much in your children so if they ever left home, like the mother of Moses, you are put enough in them to see still serve Jehovah. Because listen, if you give them all the masters and all the first degrees and PhDs from Cambridge, Oxford, Durham, LSE, whatever university, and they do not know Jesus, you are a failure. That's the truth. That's the truth. This ties with uh, March, I mean May 13th and 14th, the Marriage Enrichment Week. We'll still have this subject and more on that weekend. Marriage Enrichment Week. What is marriage? A deadlock, a wedlock, an arm lock, a bad lock. A good luck or a blessed luck. So join us also on that period. Saturday will be all enhanced with several points being taught by me, Pastor Yemisi, and Pastor Depot. And on Sunday we'll have Gary Chapman in Ho Street and Prayer City. We we'll share more news, more announcements tomorrow morning. God bless you. Dio Vubenis. Dio Steben Diga. Dio Steben Soy. Bwana kubariki, unyamishwa, mkulu mkulu, agubu sesi. Mwariba kukumbrere, wumerotu zita, rayesu. Good night, kwa heri, sasa, the year.